Hi, everybody. It's Deirdre Fay and Jack Volpe Rotundi is here with me. And many of you know that we went on a trip to India, a three week Panchakarma retreat with this incredible guy right here that we're with. John DeCat, otherwise known as Nanak from my days in the ashram back in the dark ages, a long time ago. So I've always loved John, always loved him and knew what a heart and soul he had that when I heard he was doing a trip to India, I've been trying to get my schedule clear to be able to go for years now. And finally, we just seized the day, Jack and I, and we just jumped right in on the train and you know when they talk about things being life-changing I felt this was a transformation of grace I felt like grace descended and inhabited me it was so intense so of course we got home it was a little bit hard adjustment we got home but people wanted to know all about it so I asked John if he would be willing to get on the video with us and let you know so you can hear as much about it. We're also going to be talking to Katie O'Connell who does the yoga parts of it. So we'll just bring it all to you in little sips of information and you can see if it feels right to you. So. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here with you, Deirdre. I've known Deirdre or I know her as a Sita for many years. Like she said, we lived at the ashram together. And, separate uh, wings, let's be clear, separate wings. Separate wings. Separate wings. But um, I always loved her from afar from so much. So when I heard that her and her sweetheart Jack were coming with us, we were so thrilled and it was such a blessing to have them for many reasons. She did a little bit of teaching, but just her presence was incredible. So um, I'm thrilled to be here with you all and, uh, and, and share with you a little about uh, the Ayurveda retreats. In India, I thought in order to begin, I'll give a little bit of, of context on how I got into Ayurveda, why, and all that stuff. Actually, I, I got into Ayurveda initially about 30 years ago at the ashram where uh, Deirdre and I were living. And when I left that ashram in 1991, I wanted to study Ayurveda, but there weren't any Ayurvedic schools in the United States at that time. And I didn't want to go all the way to India for five years and study there. So I, I ended up going to an acupuncture school instead because acupuncture was more established at that time. So it was, I had to do pre-med and then four years of acupuncture training. I became an acupuncturist and practiced acupuncture for 15 years. And during that 15 year period, I kept learning about Ayurveda and I always had a deep appreciation, respect and, and adoration for Ayurveda because it's so beautiful. And, I had the opportunity to study with the Sant Lad, and then I took a, a two-year-long course to become a consultant about it at uh, Kripalu Yoga Center. And I was just always passionate about it and wanted to do their Panchakarma because of all the energy medicines in the world, Ayurveda is the only one that offers a comprehensive healing protocol that lasts from anywhere from three to six weeks. And I knew deep down that I wanted to do this for my body, for my mind, for my soul. So about five, six years ago, or six years ago at this point, I was traveling in India and I looked for centers and I found this place that looked good. And I went there and it's up in the mountains of South India at 6,000 feet where it's cool in the evening and beautiful warm days during the day. It's like kind of California weather, mid coast California weather where it's really warm during the day and sweater weather at night. But, um, and, and I love it because it's high up in the mountains. There's no bugs. The weather's fabulous. It's clean. It doesn't really feel exactly like you're in the hot, sweaty, intense South India vibe entirely because you're up in these beautiful mountains. So I, I, was, I was called to go there for various reasons. And it was life-changing. And I thought, you know, I really want to come back. And I thought, why not bring people here? You know, especially in this day and age, we live in a culture where we're all so busy so stressed out, running around like chickens with their head cuts off. And often, you know, with all these different devices and our vata, what's called in Chinese med uh, Ayurvedic medicine, vata gets quite deranged. And this is such a, an opportunity for us to really slow down, join in community and really heal and cleanse our physical body, our emotional body and our mental body on a really deep level. And I just felt like offering it to others and so I came home and my dear friend Katie said she'd love to co-lead it with me. Katie is a wonderful yoga teacher and Ayurveda consultant herself. 
And so we joined up as a team and we led it together. I think this is our fifth year coming up this year doing it. So we've learned a lot in the process of doing it and um, worked out a lot of the kinks of the program. And now it's just kind of a seamless, really beautiful event. And so lovely having Jack and Deirdre there this year. They're so beautiful, such big hearts. They added so much. And so we're thrilled that they're coming back. And, you know, I, there's so much you can say about Ayurveda. I mean, my gosh, it's a, it's a whole lifelong study. But uh, Ayurveda essentially means knowledge of life and it's about how to bring our body into balance naturally and how to detox naturally in a healthy, slow, moderate way. And it's how to calm the nervous system in a profound way naturally. So in short, Ayurveda seeks to balance the different elements in our body of fire, water, air, ether, and earth. And as we do that, and we cleanse and we balance those elements, our body comes back into alignment and stress decreases, autoimmune systems can greatly improve, blood pressure decreases, um, you know, hypertension, uh, skin issues, um, psoriasis, eczema, menopause, you know, just arthritis and the natural aging process that we all go through. I really feel like it's an anti-aging protocol at a very profound level that doesn't have the side effects of medication, you know? And especially as I've done it for the past five, six years now, I notice each year it just goes deeper and deeper and, and health benefits uh, feel exponential. And so I feel very blessed to, one, have been able to do this, and two, to be able to offer it to others. And uh, I mean, there's more we can say about Ayurveda, but, but uh, one last thing I'll say that I love about this particular retreat is that it's there are some Ayurveda retreat centers that are like hospitals and they're very strict and you can't go on walks you can't play music you can't do hatha yoga you can't and they're very powerful and very profound but they're really for people who are more really sick and need that kind of deep deep attention so this place, while it's very professional, comprehensive panchakarma, it allows for a little more flexibility too, which I really love because we're able to play music in the evenings and sing together. We're able to go on beautiful walks through the mountains and through these exquisite villages where these beautiful people live with these incredible hearts and, and really get a little bit of a cultural dive. So we're not just secluded away in a retreat center in the mountains and unable to connect with the depth and the richness of the Indian culture. We can go shopping in town. We can walk through the villages. We can walk through forests and beautiful tea plantations. So there's an opportunity to get out and about and also really interact palpably with the Indian people and the Indian culture, which also makes it, I think, a richer experience, you know, because many of the people who come with us are coming to India for the first time and would like some richness of the culture while at the same time, getting the health benefits from, you know, Ayurveda retreat, you know. And lastly, I'll say Ayurveda is becoming so popular now, you know. It's, it's about 10 years behind Chinese medicine as far as popularity in the U.S. So now, when I first started practicing acupuncture in 1996 after graduating, it was like still kind of a weird thing. Acupuncture was like, well, and now acupuncture is in hospitals. It's quite mainstream. People don't even blink when people say I'm going to the acupuncturist. But Ayurveda is kind of following suit right behind it. You know, and becoming very popular. And, and over the next 10, 15, 20 years, I think these Panchakarma experiences in the US and in India will become more abundantly offered. The nice thing about doing it in India is that it's much more affordable. You know, and to do this sort of thing at, in Fairfield, Iowa, or with Deepak Chopra in Los Angeles or San Diego is like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 easily. And that doesn't even include accommodation. Whereas here, you can get a full rich experience that includes everything other than flight and, tr and transportation from the airport to the, to the resort. It includes everything, it includes herbs, it includes the doctor visits, which can happen daily. It includes the two, three treatments a day. It includes the yoga, it includes the music, it includes lectures on Ayurveda, it includes a whole pantheon of, of offerings. So we feel like we also want to make this affordable for people because it's such a profound, benefit to our health and on multiple levels. So we're, we're honored to be able to offer this at a, a, a financially affordable um, rate for, for, for what, the, what the beauty of Ayurveda offers. It is a three-week protocol. 
you can do it for two weeks. We really highly recommend three weeks is sort of the minimum that one should do it for it to be really a complete punch of karma experience. Though some people occasionally come for two weeks and, and still get a lot of benefit, but we really highly recommend the, the three week, full three weeks, especially since you're flying halfway around the world. You know, it takes a few days just to adjust to the, the, the jet lag. And so to really get the most out of it, we recommend three weeks. But anyway, I know you guys had some other questions. Uh, you know, I thought it was so good you brought that up about the doctor because he lives right there. So he's available and you see him around and he's so great. He's so funny. But he's so knowledgeable. And I know when I was going through certain stuff and Jack was going through, he would just come right up to our place and interact with us. Really important. Anything you want to say about that, Jack? Yeah, I just think he was incredibly accessible, brought things uh, in very, very clear terms. You can visit him in his office, which is right there on the premises every day if you wanted to. But as Deirdre said, he did come up on occasion when, when we requested it actually up to our, our our little pad you know and and visited with us when we were you know uh, both uh struggling and i was struggling because i i threw my back out and typically when i throw my back out i'm out for a week or two i'm really like very limited i was back in business after two days it was just one a very small micro example of how things are different at the uh, at the uh ayurvedic retreat you know i'm also thinking about that other guy who came who had parasites who had tried everything Western on the planet to, and had tried every alternative thing he could think of. He'd actually even been on another punch of karma retreat and nothing had helped him. He was, you know, he looked terrible. He was in yeah, dire straits. He was in rough shape. And within two, two days, I think it was three yeah. days. He three was, days at the most. He was color, yeah. everything, energy. That was a miracle. Yeah, it was amazing. It was fantastic. Yeah, he was suffering with that digestive stuff, I think for almost six, seven months. And it was, it was great. He was getting some serious benefit and relief. At the, at the time. All right. So I, I wanted to yeah. ask. Uh, Jack, I just say, I want to say a couple other things because I wanted to say about India that the first time I was in India was in the 80s, in the mid to late 80s. And the India then, it was like this sacred, it was the, what I think, I, I hate to say it, like this old India. It was like you really got the taste and the flavor of, of the sacredness of India coming through. And it's really changed. You know, it's gotten very Western, which is great in many ways. Yeah. But one of the things I loved about this place is it's way up, like John said, up in the mountains, 6,000 feet up in tea plantations. So it's gorgeous around. It's just really beautiful. And you have that experience of the old sacred India where the, the preciousness is there. The love is so alive, uh, mm -hmm. vibrant, and you feel it in the treatments where the, the ladies who worked with me and the men that worked with Jack and John, they, the, you could feel their uh, connection to themselves, to the divine. They would make a little prayer before they would do the massage and apply oils. Uh, and, you know, I have to tell you this one other piece is after the massage, because of course two people give you the massage every day, twice a day. So it's talk about body shame being released. <laughs> then they, they, one of the ladies will take you by the hand. It's so sweet. It you know, would take you in and, and lovingly and kindly just clean you. And it's something that I hope I'm not freaking out, but it's something that is so profound to experience that kind of loving, kind attention that when do we ever get that? Maybe when we were infants, if we were lucky. Uh, so I, I wanted to add that in as well. No, that, that's great. Staff is so beautiful. They're so heartfelt. You know, they all, all the staff live in the villages right around the center and, and they've, most of them have been practicing for 20 plus years and they, they know so much the different types of treatments because everybody gets a different treatment depending on what's going on for you constitutionally. So right. treatments are, it's not like everybody gets the same thing depending on what you're working with, what some of your symptoms are. You get specific treatments for your constitution. And the ladies, there's like 40 different treatments people can get and the, and the ladies and the men know all of them so beautifully. And like uh, Deirdre says, they're so heart-centered Another thing, just the FAQ, 
One of the things that's nice about this center is even if you've never been to India before, some people are like, oh my God, how do I get there? How do I, how do I, I don't want to go, you know. But it's actually quite easy to fly to Mumbai or Delhi, and then you change flights to Coimbatore, and the resort will pick you up at the airport in Coimbatore and drive you straight up to the um, <clears throat> straight up to the Ayurveda center. Of course, if you want to explore India a little bit before or after, you're more than welcome. Um, but it's it's a very safe transportation directly to the Ayurveda Retreat Center. Um, Jack, was there something you wanted to bring in? Yeah, I thought it would be useful just to ask uh, John some questions and, and invite you, Deirdre, to, to chime in. Uh, sort of take a look at a day in the life of a person's experience at the Ayurvedic retreat, because I think for anyone like myself who had, has never been to India, who's never been to an Ayurvedic retreat, there was so much that was, was new and different that I think it might be useful to frame it in a way that is accessible for folks sure. in terms of what's it like what you, when you wake up in the morning, what are the options? What do you do? How does your day flow? And, and what's it like? What's it like in your heart? What's it like in your body? What's it like in your mind? And just, so I just want to ask a series of questions about taking us through the day, if that's okay. Yeah, great idea. And if you guys have any, you know, if I miss something that you guys ch want to chime in on, please do, by all means. Fantastic. So uh, we'll try to be clear about what really is optional, truly optional, and what is really part and parcel of the, the, the retreat experience as yeah. we go through. So you, you can wake up um, on the early side and go on an optional walk with other folks that are participating in the retreat as part of John and Katie's group. The and I'll, sunrise, I'll let you here to talk about you watch the, the sunrise. Sun. I'll let Deirdre talk a little bit about that. I went on one walk with you, but you went on several. Ah, uh, well, it it was so peaceful and quiet, and literally, you're watching the sunrise over this the mist in the tea plantations. Uh, it's spellbinding. And then you walk into the villages, and you see the temple, small temples that are there, and uh, the way people live, and it filled me with gratitude for our lives because we have so much compared to so many people on the planet. And one of the days, you know, when I was walking down this alleyway and I ran into somebody that I knew who I just loved who was working at the ashram and it was total embrace to bring us into the house. Just love, love, love. It was incredible, incredible to welcome me. And this is all without speaking I don't speak Hindi, I don't speak Tamil, and they don't speak English. And yet you feel the joy and the bliss there. Right. Any of the videos, we should post the videos that John has done about John Decat about. We could, we could post out uh, the village. That's right. It's just. It would be beautiful to post. Because the yeah. other piece of it is John is an amazing musician and percussionist. So, so he brings that whole element. Anyway, Jack. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll definitely get to that because the evenings were full of joy and love as well. So for those who, who went on the optional sunrise walk, uh, great. There's also, I think shortly after that, there's also yoga. Yoga is part and parcel of the retreat, although to be honest, and it's partly because I had back issues, I didn't really attend a lot of the yoga. But um, I'll let John and Deirdre talk about the morning yoga, because typically every morning, if I'm not mistaken, or at least most mornings, is that true? Right. There, there is a, a yoga session that's typically led by Katie. Is that correct? Yeah. Katie does a beautiful job of making mm -hmm. people feel safe, no matter what level of yoga they're at. And it's all optional. You know, the walk in the morning is optional. The yoga is optional, of course. Um, but the class is sort of modified. It has a very easy flow, but can also be more vigorous if people want to specify it themselves and make it a little more vigorous. Katie does a really nice job. She's been teaching yoga for so many years and does a very... She's now my favorite yoga teacher. Oh, she's lovely. I had, I, after living at Kripal and doing yoga all that time, I wanted a certain kind of yoga. I don't necessarily need to always be doing a workout. I wanted to be able to contact myself and uh, have that sacred connection inside. Katie is an amazing facilitator of that. I, I, I thought, really, she was one of the best yoga teachers I've ever had. And I can't wait to keep sharing her with you. And Katie have... Um I mean, Deirdre and Jack have also going to do an interview with Katie, too. Later. Yes, so, right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll dive in a little bit deeper into the yoga and Katie, Katie's wonderful role. Um, 
it, I, I should also say that for the time that we were there, uh, Deirdre and I, I, pretty much every single day was idyllic in terms of the weather that John described earlier, you know, sort of cool, perfect for sleeping weather at night, but during the day, just sunny and lovely. But then there's this, then there's this breakfast. And I have to say, for me, I experienced the time we were there as uh, just being ensconced in love. And a big part of that is, is the hearts of the people who work in the, uh, at the retreat community. Uh, and that, and that is certainly true of the chef and the chef's assistants and the other folks who work in, in, in the kitchen that, that bring you food that, just unbelievable. Um, and I'll let both Deirdre and uh, John chime in a little bit about the food aspect, but let's just focus on breakfast for now because we'll, we'll certainly get to, to lunch and dinner as well. After, after the morning walk, and the, the retreat's literally up in the mountains, you have a view from the retreat center, so you can walk down through the villages or the, you know, up to higher peaks, so there's many options for the morning walk. And then there's yoga, and then you have breakfast, which is usually some delicious blend of papaya and pomegranate and mango or and then various delicious Indian breakfasts of dosa or uttapam or really like tasty it's um, and so like true Jack says the guys who serve it are just hilarious <laughs> like being served by Laurel and Hardy or something or like Abbott with Hardy. love man are they like yeah. a lot and attended to yeah. Abbott and Costello with lots of love and um I'm dating myself there with Abbott and Custer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's see what else. And then after breakfast, which is exquisite, there's treatments that happen in the morning. Morning treatments anywhere from really kind of 8.30 to 12. Um, and you have an hour-long treatment at that point. And, um, and then... Can you tell us a little bit about the, the Ayurvedic massage as a whole, John? Because Ayurvedic massage is, is somewhat different or very different in some cases from other types of modalities, right? Yeah, there's so many different types of treatments. Um, some of it's massage, some of it's herbal pulses, some of it's uh, bathing with rice or uh, you know, pounding with herbal pulses or sort of deep tissue, abhyanga with two people with this amazing herbalized oil. Most all the treatments have herbalized oil in them because in Ayurveda, they, the, the word for Sanskrit for oil means also love. So for Ayurveda, oil, these herbalized oils is a way of putting love into our body. And uh, after, you know, three weeks of two treatments a day with these incredible oils, your skin just starts to really feel like uh, totally transformed. And, it's a very and, different experience to lie in a massage table that's made out of wood that looks like it's it's been there for 200, 300 years. It's incredibly comfortable because they put little pads under specific joints. It's incredibly comfortable, but it allows them to use uh, different quantities of oil, as John said, and be able to clear that off your body and then clear that off the table so they can move on to other things. Um, I'd never had a massage experience like it, and uh, it is really quite extraordinary. Uh, quite an extraordinary experience. It's highly therapeutic in many ways because they're really targeting specific constitutional imbalances. So, um, you know, not only do they often relaxing and calm the nervous system, but they're having a huge benefit. Um, so it's not just like a, a feel good thing. Um, Absolutely. And then after that first massage of the day, then then what, John? After the first massage of the day, then there's lunch. You know, obviously there's a lot of time in there because if your treatment's at nine to 10, then you have from 10 to 12.30 to, you can go online or you can go for a walk if you didn't go for a walk in the morning or you can go rest in your room or some people scoot down to town to buy a shirt or to look at a, some jewelry or something. Um, but then at one o'clock is breakfast, I mean lunch, and again, an exquisite delicious meal and lunch. I should say all of this, because we're actually renting the whole center this year, some of these things might shift a tiny bit, but we will, all of these things will be included, but the timings might shift a little But um, uh, Yeah, delicious lunch. And we all eat together, which is a really time when we come together as community. You know, it's really a lovely time for people to share and catch up and meet people and meet people. Because during the day, sometimes you're off or in your room or you're getting a treatment or it's a little more solo. And then meals are really a time of congregation and coming together and, sharing and, and right. uh, yeah so that's and outside, which is so nice eating outside. yeah we eat outside 
outside and a beautiful patio. It's oh my god, it's gorgeous patio terrace area with swing, swing, couple swings. John, tell us about the food. Is it vegetarian? I mean, I know some of the answers to these questions, but give us give us a a a, a, a flavor, pun intended, about what the food and what it, what it isn't. Well, the food is is very Indian, and and uh, usually they have a spicy version and a simple version. This year, we're definitely going to have simple versions and spicy versions. So people who want a little spice or maybe their pitta and agni is a little low, they'll gravitate more towards spicy, more flavorful. People who want more simpler palate, more there for cleansing purposes, can have the less spicy and the simpler food. But I love the spicy myself. <laughs> and the food's amazing. The food is, is really, you know, I love Indian food and um, all aspects of South Indian Indian food. And so it's, and each day is something really different and new. And some stuff. A lot of variety. It is all vegetarian, though, however, correct? Yeah, all vegetarian. And, um, and, they, and the chefs will do every week a little cooking lesson. And that's right. all included as well. So you get to learn how to make some of these great things. Once or twice a week, you can go into a cooking lesson with the chef. And sometimes the doctor leads them also uh, in their little cute kitchen. And they very clearly explain that the whole recipe and do it, cook it there for you and, and you can write it all down. And yeah, I've gotten some great recipes that I've taken home over the years. And learned how to make dosa and udapam, which is always delicious. Great. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's lovely to have that quiet time you mentioned, John, um, you know, before breakfast, after breakfast, uh, yeah. and even after, you know, throughout the day, there's pockets of plenty of time just yeah. to either spend by yourself in quiet reflection, reading a book, be, going online, whatever it is that you wish to do. But there's a lot of time for quiet reflection in a place of exquisite natural beauty. And then after, after lunch, tell us about the afternoon. Afternoon, people do another treatment. Um, so there's another treatment in there, half hour, 45 minute treatment that happens between one, or I guess between two and five, somewhere in there. So everybody will get a little shorter treatment in the afternoon, but it's kind of a comprehensive treatment again with oils or, you know, depending on what you're getting, maybe some herbal pulses or um, steam baths, um, oil baths, like these amazing oil baths where they pour this warm oil on your body. Oh, oh my gosh. It's, it's unbelievable. Shiradara, uh, which is a, an oil that flows onto your third eye, very good for calming the brain and, and the, the nervous system. Um, so then... Everybody gets a treatment in the afternoon. That's often a time, too, where if people want to go explore in the village, they might do that, um, you know, after their treatment or before their treatment go down. And, you know, you can take a little tuk-tuk ride, about a 10-minute ride down into a couple of different towns that are down there, depending on what you want to see or try to get. Or, um, but so there's treatments all afternoon. And then sometimes... One of the nice things about being part of this group is I think a lot of people who go to the Panchakarma Ayurvedic centers, they don't necessarily understand what's happening. So they're a little bit in the dark around how does Ayurveda work? What is Panchakarma? Why am I doing this? What's going on? So Katie and I will do some lectures sometimes in the late afternoon on the history of Ayurveda, the basic introduction to Ayurveda, uh, informing people about the various treatments and why they exist and why we do them. So people start to have understanding. Whenever we have understanding about why we're doing something, it's been proven that it's an exponential benefit to our, you know, the psychosomatic effect affects all of us. So when we understand why we're doing it, actually people tend to get so much more out of it rather than being like, well, why am I doing this? What's going on? You know, so um, we really try to give people a good basic introduction, understanding of Ayurveda and, and, why they're there and to hold space for any questions that might be arising and that helps the group feel safer too you know when they when they can ask questions and they they get you know good answers so and sometimes dr. sometimes dr Mooley will also lead some lectures for us on food and various uh take-home things that can benefit us long after we leave the center um so yeah. Very fond memories of some of those talks, both from you and Katie, as well as with the doctor. Informative, just very enlivening, uh, and very, very uh, useful to understand the context of what you're doing there and why you're doing what you're doing. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. So then we do the we do the treatments, and then sometimes lecture, not always, but sometimes, and then in 
even then there's often a little break before dinner. Oh, then we have meditation. Um, actually, you know, I should say in there, um, there's sometimes another yoga class on like a more vigorous sort of aerobic um, yoga class or workout that is done like for strengthening the body, more, more physical, a little more cardio um, that, that um, one of the teachers at the retreat leads, an Indian fellow. So sometimes people might go to that if they want to do a little more cardio and that's totally optional. Um, and then, and then sometimes I should also say that that same man does reflexology on people. Yes. Which, so really sometimes you get three treatments a day and the reflexology, I don't know how you found it, Jack, but I like zoned out. I would be like, you know, I'd, I'd be there like, oh, this isn't really going to be much. What's he doing? He's pressing on my feet a little bit. And next thing I know, like, <laughs> completely gone. And, yeah. You know, and then I'd wake up and it was, it was lovely. Um, uh. I, the first couple of days, I was like, what's this all about? And then by day three, I'm like, totally chill. Because I don't like people touching my feet in general. And I was I was not even going to do it. And I'm like, what the heck? I'm here, right? Just go with the flow, dude. And after a few days, oh, I was so happy. You were happy. a hero, Jack. You've tried everything. You were like, <laughs> you were like unbelievable. Um, so then... Um, then there's dinner, which happens inside because the temperature mm. starts dropping a little bit and um, we all sit at tables inside together. Lovely spaces all, by the way. The, the spaces to eat inside, the, the terrace we mentioned, the patio, the massage room. The spaces are just lo lovely spaces. And then in the evening, you know, we, we've learned it's really good to give people nights off. So what we try to do is we have one night off where people can just go chill, relax, relax in their room, do follow up on emails or just get offline altogether. Play dominoes, play dominoes, you know. Play dominoes, play, uh, what was that other game? Oh, dominoes, right. That, 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 that was the new dominoes. I had never. We introduced the people at the retreat to dominoes. It's not just for old people anymore. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll have to, we'll have to bring a couple games next year. Maybe we can. Indeed. So anyway, uh, one night off and then one night on and the night on is always optional. 99% um, of the time it's optional. Um, and we sometimes do music. Here, Katie has a beautiful singing voice. Mm -hmm. like Kate Wolf, incredible guitar player singing voice, just melts your heart. And uh, she does, um, you know, English songs. And then she also sings Kirtan. Kirtan is when we all sing together and like a chant in Spanish. Very hard opening. But sometimes we do Kirtan, sometimes we do more songy songs. And then the next night we'll have a night off and then Another night, we'll do drum story, which is sacred storytelling with different drums from around the world that I love teaching or doing. Not, not really teaching. Doing. Talk about melting your heart, guys. Um, just Google John Decat. It's spelled D E space K A D T. And just Google John. And John's not going to talk himself up, but man, we, Deirdre and I have had the pleasure, not just to retreat, but we've, we've gone to see him live telling stories for, with, with, with different instruments. Uh, Mesmerizing. Plus, absolutely <laughs> incredible people. And uh, that, that's, like, that's worth the price of admission. It just absolutely yeah. melts your heart. It's so beautiful, John. Not just your, your, your instrumental work, but just the way you tell stories and engage people. I was like a little, I was literally felt like I caught myself several times thinking, I am now a six-year-old kid again. I, I, it was just a wonderful, wonderful feeling. I was hanging on every word. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, well, that's exactly, you know, one of the two of the beauties of storytelling. One is that really these stories carry that ancient wisdom, you know, that have come down from centuries and centuries that are really our typical stories about our own internal journey and this life of healing that Deirdre talks about so eloquently in all of her talks about how we heal trauma because we all have trauma we all you know in a way have to travel through some kind of sort of dark night in order to get to a place perhaps of deeper resonance with our something that's more essential to our true nature and and the stories really exemplify that journey in such a beautiful way that's um that's uh, uh um uh, relatable i think no matter what religion and no matter what belief system people have, people can somehow relate to these stories. So I love that. And then the other aspect is making us feel like a little kid again, because you know, storytelling is in our DNA. We, we knew it when we were kids, and our ancestors and our ancestors' ancestors have told it. So there's something very that, that we recognize in, in the simple story of community. You know? So it's fun. And then 
some nights, you know, one, one of the sessions we did, Deirdre did an amazing thing on healing trauma and, and a little bit of her work. We were blessed to have her join us for one, one session with that. So, you know, or another night, another woman offered some sound healing, which was powerful. And another night, we might just check in with people and see how people are doing. Does anybody have any questions? Or, but we always try to do a story and a couple nights of music each week. Um, and then have equal many nights off so people can have just some solo time. And we try to create the balance between having some community so we know we're there with each other and for each other, but then also people have their time just to be with themselves, you know, because we want that balance for people. You know, so. Right. And then, it's, and then it's time for sleep, sleepy sleep. And man, it's yeah. a, just a very comfortable place to be. It's, it's, uh, it's generally very, very quiet there. And it's just, Deirdre, you said you slept better there than you have in a long time and you know you're not exactly you know. yeah Personally, i would take naps i never take naps I was, <laughs> and if i take a nap i can't sleep at night but i slept and slept and slept it was so rejuvenating so i mean, maybe that's why i want to go back it was so rejuvenating. Uh -huh. and i could really feel you know when john talked about coming into balance i i, I could really feel that shift of just layers just just dropping off Right. So that's, that's a day in the life. I'm going to let Deirdre and John share a couple more things. And then I'm going to just sort of frame sort of ways that you can communicate um, with us and other some other information where you can find some other pieces of information, but we'll also include it in whatever email that we share this with you uh, on. But John and Deirdre, any, any final comments that you want to make? Off the top of my head, I, I, I really don't. I just was incredible I felt so blessed to be there I you know and for me it was a gift because I knew John so it was an easy transition I'd been to India so I knew you know I knew what I was getting into but what I didn't expect was um, you know just the, the blessing of grace just the just incredible grace descended and uh, I feel changed by it. I feel like it radically shifted me in some powerful way that I still can't quite name, but I feel like it comes through me and um, I hear it from people. I hear people saying, well, the effect it has. And frankly, I would want that for everybody. I, I would want everyone to have this, that sense of alignment that comes when everything is aligned. Everything is coherent inside is, you know, sort of the, scientific we term when all the organs and all the viscera just move into balance oh, it's really awesome mm. well Deirdre it's been so wonderful having you and Jack articulate your experience and uh, such a blessing to have you guys there I love it just not only because you're such a good friend and I love you so much but just because um, who you are who your personality is like you made everybody feel safe you know, and just, just your personality, just mm. the realness that you bring. Here, here. You made everybody uh, love being there that much more. You yeah. Know? And Jack, you too, you know, just your willingness to jump in and your open heartedness, like everybody at the end. You guys, you guys came a little early and left a little early. So um, they all left before, before we did a few days and everybody was missing them both from wow. We missed you all too. You know, yeah. that's, a, that's an important point that you make, John, is because we were there before you all were there. And it was a very different experience being there kind of on our own with lots of other guests, but then being with our group and the sense of community and belongingness and thoughtfulness and connection that happened that wasn't there before really enhanced don't you think, Jack? I absolutely completely agree. It was a completely different experience after the that tight knit and very intimate group of how many people were there in our group last year, John? I think fourteen, fifteen total. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very intimate group. I mean, the retreat itself is not that much larger, but it's just a very, very different vibe when you have that safe community that that everyone participates in. I'm just going to um, basically ask a few questions, John, before we wrap things up, just because I think it's useful for people. Even though we'll provide you all with. Uh, a website that you can go to, which will have uh, um, testimonials and FAQs and pictures and all sorts of glorious things. But could you give us a sense of what the dates are? Um, if, if someone was to come for all three weeks next next year, do we have dates for, for 2020? 
February 14th starts Valentine's Day. Okay. And we kick it off on the day of love. And then it goes to March 5th or 6th. I'm actually not quite sure. It's, it's okay. 5th or 6th. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, what's, what's, uh, can you give us a, a sense of what the, um, the range of costs are for the, um, the different uh, uh, accommodations that you could have um, and how and that affects you? In, this right? is all inclusive. Yeah, right? we, we definitely want to be clear about that, that the, whatever John will share is all inclusive, but you can have different tiers, if you will, of accommodations. Can you give us a sense of, of, of how that works, John? It includes the room, all the meals, tea, Medicine. Uh, me all the medicines, all the treatments. All the doctor consultations. Yes. The room, all the food. The music, the lectures, the yoga, the meditations, you name it. The yoga, right. the walks, everything, it's all inclusive. The, the only thing it doesn't include is, the tra is basically the, the, the air and ground transportation. Exactly, exactly. It's like $40 ground transportation. But if you actually travel with others, if you happen to plane arrives at a similar time, which often it does, because everybody's sort of arriving around the same day or two, then it's actually even cheaper to get to the um, resort. Um, uh, uh, what was I gonna say? There was something, oh, you know, the only difference, as Jack said, is uh, the only thing that creates a difference in price is whether you're in a deluxe room or a glass deluxe room or a villa or a super villa. So there's a few different options. And actually, I do not totally know the numbers. So I'm hesitant to say anything. No problem. It'll be, it'll be on the website. It'll be on the website. Somewhere between three to 4,400, maybe 3,000 to 4,400, depending on which facility you're getting. And um, if you share a room, one thing that's important to say, but I wouldn't quote me on those numbers. You should go to the website. It's all there. But um, if you share a room with somebody, whether it's a partner or a friend, it's actually, I think, around $400 cheaper. Meaning if you rent a room by yourself, it's a little more costly because most rooms fit two people. And if you're occupying it by yourself, it's just a little more costly to take up that extra space. Whereas right. if you share it with somebody, it comes down quite a bit. And all those numbers are, are in the- The other thing to think about is that's over three weeks. That's yes. all the meals all the medicine, all the treatment, everything over three weeks. Yeah, now, she leads a retreat in Nicaragua for a week, a, a yoga retreat in Nicaragua for a week, and it's the same cost. Wow. It, right. it includes meals and a space to do yoga, and that's it. So three I'm gonna, getting like, all, I mean, it's like- you So I'm gonna, I'm gonna encourage everybody who, who, who's, who really wants to take a deep, deeper dive into this, check out the website that will provide the URL and really do, do the math. I mean, check, check it out for yourself. Do your own research and compare what the, the value and the cost is for this versus any other alternative you might, might want to uh, consider. Obviously, the other blessing is you have, you can reach out to me or Deirdre or John with, with any questions that you may have. Um, but uh, this has been an incredible conversation. Any final thoughts or comments, uh, Deirdre or John? No, I think we covered it all. It's pretty incredible. I'm so glad to be talking about it too because it brings it all home and fresh mm -hmm. to me. Mm. You know, I, I don't, you know, just in closing, I can I'll only speak to how profound it's been for me. I feel very blessed to have stumbled across this annual retreat for myself and for my own body and mind and soul. Mm -hmm. and, and I think as many people that can take advantage of this offering, you know, the better, because it really has a window to offer us greater health, uh, greater peace of mind, and uh, a, a really um, non-toxic way to really take care of ourselves and, and, and slow the aging process and, and, and in, a, in a palpable way. That's been my experience and the experience of many people who join the retreat. So I encourage you to, to join us if you'd like to, and we, we welcome you. And the, 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 the new website is called AyurvedaIndiaRetreat.com. Is that right, Jack? I think AyurvedaIndiaRetreat.com. Don't, I don't have that handy, but we'll provide the, uh, the URL. Uh, whenever we share this video, we'll be, we'll be sure to have that URL in, in the email as well. And the beautiful thing about this year is that actually we're renting the entire facility. This will be the first year that we're renting the entire facility. And the other beautiful thing about this coming year is that Jack and Deirdre will be there again and having their presence is like amazing and sweet. So thank, thank you, you for taking the time to, uh, you know, uh, talk with me so long on the, on the, 
Zoom here and share your hearts and I love you both. And uh, I love you, John. Love you, John. Thank you so much for coming and joining us on this call.